My guest today is John Skeet. John, how are you? Not so bad, thanks. Not so bad. Ed's, welcome back to the show. Thank you very much. Yeah. Nice to be here. Uh, you're uh, speaking here at Code Mesh mm-hmm. on what? On versioning. So the title of the talk is versioning 1.0.1. Okay. Um, but it feels to me like versioning rules so much of what we do in software and affects how we ship code and how we consume code. And we don't tend to think about it very much. So this is almost a sequel to uh, a dates and times talk where you know we're using dates and times all the time and don't tend to actually pay very much attention to it. Um, I seem drawn to topics that are more complex than you might expect mm-hmm. and you're utterly critical to what we do. I remember a time when um, I was I was using versioning in my software, but I wasn't even aware of versioning. In other words, I was working for my for myself, right. or I was working for a company, and I was just making changes and pushing them out. Yep. Um, yep. And then, which I guess there's some versioning in there, but what, can we step back and do a definition? When you say so versioning. It really depends on what you're versioning, and that governs what's important about how you're versioning things. So, if you're not versioning anything at all, you're just editing files. Say you're you've got code, and you're just editing it live on the web server. It's certainly how I used to in university. You know, uh-huh. My well, web server, I just yeah. shell into it and and. Just edit stuff. Uh, so no in those control days, I was, over I had, I had at all. another copy of it. I right. would edit it and then I would X copy. Oh, look at you. I X copy. That was <laughs> all my sophistication. The yeah. Um, this was a long time ago. <laughs> so that's got no versioning at all. Um, and then you think of version control. Yeah. So whether that's uh, with Git or uh, Mercurial, whatever it is. Right. And in version control, there are going to be lots of different things uh, that are available tags, branches, whatever. But fundamentally, a git hash is a version of the entire tree at that time. It's an identifier okay. that lets you say, hey, I want to get at what this was like at a point in time. Oh, okay. And versioning is all about controlling the evolution of whatever it is we're talking about. And it doesn't have to be code. So you know, just to plug my book, I've got the fourth edition of C Sharp In Depth mm-hmm. is coming out soon. And that fourth edition is part of the version part of the identifier if you want to get hold of that version of the book you have to say I want the fourth edition okay. if you just say C sharp in depth then it's ambiguous ah. so uh, there we've got a book we've got code in a code repository uh, there can also be libraries so for .NET developers that would normally mean NuGet packages uh, that follow semantic versioning then there are things like network APIs. So I work with Google Cloud Platform APIs a lot. So uh-huh. like the Speech API, the Vision API, and these are versioned. Okay, um, these are web know, services. They're, they're web services. If I don't, I don't even know what the web part of web services means. You, you make a request, you get a response back. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether that's a RESTful kind of request, oh, okay. whether it's an RPC HTTP style. Yeah, yeah, it's it's over HTTP, um, and those are versioned. So the team could be working on the Google Cloud Speech API version 2, which could look completely different from the Speech API version 1. Right. And you know, you talk to either the V1 or the V2 and API. How, and it could be very different how you speak to each one. Exactly. So uh, let me just uh, paraphrase. A version is a snapshot in time of some sort of digital asset or set of assets. It may fair? be. So the, the snapshot part is interesting because for a network API, mm-hmm. There's no asset that you're snapshotting necessarily. Okay. And unlike the Git example or the book example, if I say V1 of the Cloud Speech API, that really means version one of whatever is published at the moment as mm. far as clients talking to it. Ah, okay. So even, even though there can be V1 and V2, V1 can still evolve, right. which is, happens to be how Google Cloud Platform does API versioning. Different platforms may handle versioning differently. It's not like there's any one answer here. But we allow API producers to make backwardly compatible changes. So if they add a feature mm-hmm. and say say they support a new audio format, they can add a value to an enum saying, hey, this is now you know, new and shiny audio format. Um, and that's a backward compatible change. And that that's just rolled back into V1. Mm-hmm. So it's not like V1 always means the same thing okay. for these APIs. Whereas for a NuGet package, it's always going to mean the same thing. For a Git hash, you, know, you, you really, really want. If I check out this hash, it 
really should mean the same thing every time. Okay. So, so there's a distinction between what's so external and exposed to the outside world, like an API, right. and what's internal, like the code base inside of a GitHub repository. Uh, it's, it is external and internal, but actually I'd have almost put those differently that within an API, you're internally controlling it mm -hmm. and just letting people make uh, requests to the API. Okay. They're not... They're never saying, give me the whole API. Right. And th there's also the API definition in protobuf form or whatever, mm -hmm. which is slightly different. Um, whereas for something like source code, uh, certainly for open source source code, uh, anyone can say, right, I want to get all of the repository at this commit. And you're you're getting a whole thing. Mm -hmm. Likewise with a book, you know, I'm saying, I want the fourth edition. Right. Um, whereas the the notes for the fourth edition, that varies over time. Right. And if you say, I want to see all the notes for the fourth edition, that's a little bit like making an API call. Mm. Um, and it's sort of, I will give you some things, and that can vary over time, even though the book itself doesn't. OK. All right, so versioning, we've, we've kind of exhausted what it is. <laughs> Why is it important? Why do we care about versioning? Because if we don't, bad things happen, basically. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> Let's terrify if, the audience. Right. Kind of uh, well, <laughs> oh, I haven't even got to the terrifying. But everyone can probably understand that you know, if we don't version things, then how do we go back if we if we realize that we've made a mistake in yep, Git? You know, how could we check out the previous thing? How could we branch from an earlier version? Sure. If only um, I could go back to yesterday at right. 9 a.m. when uh, everything was perfect. And, and with Git, yeah, you can. <laughs> indeed. And I don't know how many of your audience will have ever been in the situation we were describing. Your sophisticated X-copy um, <laughs> approach might just, oh, edit it on the server approach. I don't know whether you ever got into a situation where you've made some terrible mistakes, X copied them over, and then you know, there's there's nothing you can do about that. And I certainly have had that experience. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, hopefully, most of the tech community has evolved to say, hey, it's a, it's a good idea to keep old versions of things right. for at least a while. Um, so versioning enables us to remove mistakes or to uh, go back and branch from a particular time. So for example, with node time, um, I would have my node time, date and time API. For, what, what uh, yeah, so node time is my date and time API for okay. .NET. Okay. Uh, so it's a NuGet package. And I may have a bug that I wouldn't want to fix in a quite old version. So I've got to be able to get back to where the code was, <laughs> branch off that, and then release that new version. And people need to be able to know, oh, I was using 1.4.2, I see there's a 1.4.3, what does that mean? Mm. Or I'm using 2.2.3, I see there's a 1.4.2, should I take that? What, what are the implications of that? Right. And that's where semantic versioning comes in, which is just one, uh, one versioning scheme, but it's within the .NET community and, and more widely a very, very popular one. Um, and what does it do? What is semantic version? Right. So a uh, semantic version is a major min uh, major version number, a minor version, and a patch, okay. and optionally something sort of arbitrary text that effectively indicates, hey, this is pre-release. This is not okay. necessarily stable. So it would be usually uh, in the format of uh, a dot b dot c. Exactly. Like so you know, two point zero point zero one point four point two, okay. and broadly speaking, uh, you should be able to go up or down within within a minor version. So one point, if I'm at 1.4.3 uh -huh. and I see that, uh, oh, there was a bug fix that actually has messed me up. I want to go back to 1.4.1, for example. Mm. That should be fine. So you can move both directions. Fine, meaning you, I won't have to change my client code. My client right, code. exactly. It should be compatible. It should yeah. still work. Modulo, you know, there's no point in having two versions that are exactly the same thing. Mm. Um, so there will be differences between 1.4.1 right. and 1.4.3 but you shouldn't need to recompile your code right. in order to use them. Um, it should work out of the box, and you need to pick, do I want the semantics of that with a bug fix in 1.4.3 or the pre-bug fix version in 1.4.1, and presumably there would have been two bug fixes there. So that's patch versions. Within a minor version, you can move in either direction. Within a major version, you can only move forward, so I can go from 1.1 point anything to 1.2 point anything, hmm. And that should should uh, ah. be compatible. So again, I shouldn't need to recompile, or my code should always recompile cleanly if I'm doing that. And uh, even if I don't recompile, say I've got 
uh, a dependency on something else that depends on a later version of Node Time that I'm actually using directly, mm -hmm. um, that should still be fine. Okay. Uh, but not necessarily, unlike with the patch version, not the other way around. If I've written code against 1.2.0, then I shouldn't expect to be able to compile it against 1.1.0 because usually it's, it's additional features. Uh, so compatible features between uh, minor versions in the same major version. And then if you change major version, all bets are off. You know, it could okay. be completely different namespaces. There are no guarantees at all. It, it, it um, may very well break compatibility. Right. So that meaning I'll have to rewrite my client code if I want to use Exactly, it. yes. I mean, it may not. There may well be, often uh, library authors will say, okay, I'm taking a breaking change now because I had a typo in something and it's a, a relatively unused method. Mm -hmm. um, so everyone should probably be fine, <laughs> but I'm going to make it a breaking, a, a major version because it is a breaking change and it might mess someone up. And I want to communicate that. It's all about okay. communication. I mean, if we didn't have semantic versioning, we could just have Git hashes say, right, I built this from Git hash, ABC123, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. Um, and if I didn't care about compatibility, I'd just list the Git hashes and say, well, this was built. Right. Um, what I want to be able to say is, communicating with an audience, this is the implication. If you want to move from where you are now to this, what is the implication? And semantic versioning provides an easy way of communicating that. However, that kind of assumes, we've talked about compatibility a few times, right. as if this is a well-defined, de well well-understood, um, you know, no shades of gray kind of thing. Mm. And it's really not. It's not. There's at least so, 49 shares of it so by my card. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I make any change to a public API within a library, um, in .NET specifically, and different languages will have different rules about this, I suspect that there's some way that someone could write client code that will then fail to recompile. Hmm. So adding an overloaded method, okay. or, you know, adding a method overload, mm -hmm. um, sounds like it's probably harmless. You know, if you had a method taking an int and you add one taking a string, that mm -hmm. should be fine, shouldn't it? Well, you know, how could that possibly you're, fail? You're adding, you're not taking away. Right, exactly. Well, what if you use the default literal from C Sharp 7? Uh, that's compatible with both int and string, so suddenly the, a call to foo brackets default becomes ambiguous. Or maybe you were passing in something that had an implicit conversion to both int and string. Mm -hmm. And these are really unlikely things, yeah, so impossible. you may well say, you know what, I, I will deem that to be outside the scope of what I consider to be a compatibility issue. Mm, okay. um, and that was just an example with overloading, and overloading is one of the nastiest areas for this. Uh, sure. But I like Almost your example of adding a new method, change. which seems yeah. safe, unless you have an extension method. Right, if you have an extension method that is suddenly or sort of shadowed. Yeah, yeah exactly. Sure. So if you have an application that's got an extension method, um, that extension method will only be called if the compiler can't find any applicable regular method, mm -hmm. regular instance method. So if I add an instance method to something in no time, it may well, not may well, but it could potentially break someone. Um, adding a static method doesn't have quite that, but there, there could easily still be some things like that, mm. especially with additional language features like using static um, may well mean that uh, it, it enhances the scope of things that could break, but probably won't. So you really need to think when you're talking about, oh, I'm going to release a new version of my library, should I new, do new major version, new minor version, or new patch version? If you really, really wanted to be utterly um, completely defiant of anyone saying you're breaking semantic versioning. You could do a new major version every time. And at that point, that's lost all the benefits. So yeah, that's, you know, we're uh, trying to communicate to, something. Yeah. And the communication of a new major version is, whoa, stuff could break. You yeah. you don't want to do this unless you've really thought about it. Yeah. And a new major version is disruptive. Absolutely. Um, and it's not just disruptive of people depending on you directly. But that brings us to the diamond dependency problem, which is where Suppose suppose you're using ASP.NET Core, okay. and that has uh, a, an indirect dependency on JSON.NET. And maybe it depends on JSON.NET 12. And you're also using NodeTime serialization, and NodeTime.serialization.jsonnet maybe depends on JSON.NET 11. Those are different major versions, right. 
and .NET, uh, with the current way that things are resolved, is just going to say, oh, I'll take the highest version. It'll be fine. But there's no guarantee that it really will. Right. You know, JSON.NET has been a very, very stable thing. I'm sure James has been uh, very careful and has only gone for major versions when there really is some chance mm -hmm. of breaking. I like that you know who wrote but, every piece of software. Oh, <laughs> well, uh, James Newton <laughs> King is, you know, it's, it's just, he's James. <laughs> um, and awesome guy. Uh, but the the implication should be, hey, this isn't a safe thing to do. We're only safe because someone's paid a lot of attention and really not stressed things much. Mm -hmm. I tell you, if you try it with Node Time 1 and Node Time 2, yeah, you're much less likely to be in a, uh, in a happy place. Uh, it's probably um, in an earlier phase of its life cycle development uh, than, it's, than versions it's 11 not and 12. So much. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, things depend on, Node, uh, on um, JSON.NET 6 or whatever. Uh, it's, yeah. There's still some old things. Um, I took the approach of, hey, I'm going to do a version 2. I'm going to break stuff. Okay. Uh, you know, let's, let's get rid of all those nasty things that I wish I'd not done to start with right. as long um, as you to take it, that's as fair. few major version things yeah. and you know, I wrote a migration guide here's how you should update mm -hmm. to etc um, but this diamond dependency problem is real so if you have two dependencies say node time dot serialization dot json net and asp.net core they're going to currently use one of those versions and that means that the other library might end up trying to call something that no longer exists hmm. or has been renamed or whatever it is. Um, there are ways that we could solve this in .NET for some situations. So uh, we could load both versions. That would be complicated. So introducing comple more complexity into developers' lives is always right. kind of risky. Um, but it would be safer in some ways. Okay. Maybe we should only have two versions if they are different major version numbers. So if ASP.NET Core depends on JSON.NET 11.3.2 and Node Time Serialization depends on 11.1.1, .1, then going by the conversation we had earlier in terms of compatibility, that 11.1.1 .1 should be fine with 11.3.2, right. so let's load just that. But if one is 11 and one's 12, then maybe load those separately. Yeah, when you say we could do that, you mean the, the .NET team? The .NET team. Uh, so there are things to do within the runtime, there are things to do in the project system, there are potentially even things to do within the language itself to express exactly what we intend. I, I think it would be quite nice to be able to say, hey, I want to take a dependency on JSON.NET, but compiler, please stop me from ever writing any members that directly expose that hmm. so that it's a pure implementation detail. Okay. I'm using this just to, to get stuff done, at which point it should always be modulo some interesting things like singletons and stuff. It should always, always be reasonably safe to just load that assembly in as a private implementation detail okay. that is never seen. You know, there could be multiple copies with performance implications, etc. Mm -hmm. This is a complex topic, right. but I think we need to do better to improve the reliability of being able to reason about and then run with multiple versions of the same package. Okay. And I keep use, use words like uh, expect and should. So all those right. things that you're talking about, I, I, as an API developer, if I follow these, these I'll, call, I'll put finger quotes around the word standards, uh -huh. things like semantic versioning, then people will expect major versions to be breaking, minor versions Absolutely. not to be breaking. Yes. That's yes. not necessarily, nothing's enforcing that except oh, us no, 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 no. as a community of developers. Uh, well, how would we enforce something? Um, we could, you know, we've said that any public API change could be breaking. So does that mean that it should be forcing us to a major version? No, that's just not practical. Yeah. What I would love to see is tools that could suggest, hey, this should be the, the next major version number based on oh, some these analysis things. Tools. Yeah. Um, so if you say, okay, I'm taking this out of scope of being a breaking change, but that one is in scope. So hmm. if I rename a public method, that's clearly a breaking change. Right. If I add a second overload, that takes a reference parameter, so if I uh, or something that's clearly still applicable. So I had an overload with object. And I'm adding an overload taking string. Well, anything that was previously passing a string will now call a different overload, and that's kind of breaking and, and weird in most cases. So it would be good for tooling to be able to say, okay, I have this comprehensive checklist. Hmm. I will tell you what happens. Interesting. Um, there's always room for tooling to improve our lives and, and make things, even when there are still judgment calls to be made, mm -hmm. tooling can make it clearer 
what calls you need to make mm -hmm. and make it easier for you to make those. You know, it's, it's the same, I'm sure I've bored you with this before. Not at all. The, the philosophy of Noda Time is dates and times can be tricky to work with, so rather than pretend they're easy, let's um, put the questions that developers should be answering in their faces and say, okay, you need to choose between one, two, and three here. Um, here's you know, documentation to help you make that choice. And once you have made that choice, it should be really easy to express that choice, but don't pretend the choice doesn't exist. Right. And I think the same kind of thing could be true in versioning tooling. So let's make it really easy for uh, developers to say, okay, it looks like this change is breaking if I consider this to be breaking. Do I consider it to be breaking? Yes, okay, so it's an, it needs to be a new major version. Make it easy to understand, uh, easy to take action on, um, but let's not keep kidding ourselves that everyone knows what a breaking change is right. um, because anything where there's common sense involved we're all <laughs> going to have different amounts of uh, common true. sense and it's not it's not like i've got a perfect answer here it's that my answer for one situation may not be the same as yours and if we have tooling that is able to say hey i I follow semantic versioning using this sort of checklist of what counts as breaking okay. then other tools could potentially import that and say, oh, right, okay, I understand what this library is doing. Okay. It's sort of more nuanced semantic versioning. And I actually saw your talk last night in uh, Michigan, and I think uh, the main takeaway I got from it wasn't so much, this is what you need to be doing. It was more, this is what you need to be thinking about. Is right. That, is that fair? That's uh, absolutely, the message yes. Um, versioning is a thing. It's complex. It's nuanced. It's and, important. And uh, um, we're not thinking about it enough. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, um, good. I got it right. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and, and ironically, this is what I often do in talks, and it's... Also, what I do when I'm local preaching, I ask far more questions than I provide answers uh -huh. to. I'm not smart enough to provide answers, but I can see the questions that need to be thought about by each of us. All right. <laughs> um, anything, we're about out of time here. Is there anything we should talk about that we have it? I don't think so. All right. No. Uh, John, thank you so much. Thank you very much. I don't know whether I have anything important to say about technology and friends, but they're both important things in my life. Choose what you do with yours carefully. <laughs>